Hello! Another re video review, uh, this time of Hornby's uh, 70th anniversary Mallard, which I got last year. Um, I did actually film another review of this, but I've, I've lost it somewhere on the computer. Again, it's running up and down my desk, because uh, I don't have a permanent layer, or even a temporary one up at the moment, because I've got uh, too many bags and suitcases in my room for some reason. Uh, yeah, it looks very good. Uh, overall, I think it's probably one of the best ones I've ever seen. Um, it's a 70th anniversary edition. What they did was to gold plate some of the detail parts, so which really picks them out in a nice way. I think they actually look really good. Um, I have to say, I've heard some moaning from some more fastidious rivet counters out there about uh, how these look kind of gimmicky and a little bit tacky, but, you know, I don't really... Um, I don't really mind them, to be honest. And actually, I think they look—they make it look a lot better. Uh, f for instance, um, just watch the motion of the, the linkages at the bottom. Those are all gold-plated. I think they really nicely highlight the motion of the, of the pistons, and uh, in, in, in a good way, which actually makes them makes them rather uh, friendly to film in, in uh, low light settings as well. As a happy coincidence. Um, Yes. I mean, for instance, look at the detail at the front. You see there's this uh, three-link coupler at the front, which is, uh, you know, all separate bits. It's it's not a moulded piece in any way. It's actually even really nice. Uh, typical Hornby sprung buffers, uh, you know, hoses and stuff. The whistle is also gold-plated, I think. Um, re so really, a very nice uh, touch there. The wheels, actually... Um, Though it's often said that uh, gold plating stuff makes it contact better, it actually doesn't matter at all because the uh, metal that they use for the contacts on the wheels are susceptible to the, exactly the same problems as a gold wheel would be. So you're still going to have to clean the wheels, you're still going to find there's you know, connection problems. There's really no improvement at all, it's just, you know, it's just one of those things. Uh, yes, interior of the cab, again, is printed. Uh, with a nice um, amount of detail. What's really nice here is that they've printed the dials. I don't know how well you can see it. Uh, yes, there we are. Printed the dials on all the gauges. And they've actually printed all the numbers, which is very difficult to get this camera to focus on, but it does look excellent. Um, nice amount of detail back here. There's a few uh, numbers and things. I think there's something on the back as well. Let's have a look. Uh, or not, as the case may be. Anyway, very nice amount of detail, I have to say. Um, the lettering on the side actually is really nice. I always thought that uh, the way I've seen LNER, the London North Eastern Railway initials, put on the sides of uh, various locomotives to be really rather unconvincing and and didn't have this nice sort of embossed uh, quality to them as, as if the, the letters were kind of raised with it were, were in relief but uh, they've really achieved that very nicely that's exactly as you'll see it on the side of the real um, the real one which is uh, sitting at York if anybody's seen it um, so yes and that's the same with obviously the number on the side, and uh, I think there's one at the front as well, there we are. Um, so yes, uh, this costs a pretty penny at the moment. Um, I'd say you probably wouldn't be able to get hold of one of these for much less than about um, 85 to 90 pounds. I got mine for about 85, I think, but then it, it was a kind of semi-birthday present. Um, yes, it's a very very handsome model to, to own. Um, I will say it's actually easier to get than most special editions because I think they produced about 5,000 of these, whereas most some other um, some other special editions they're only producing 1,000 or 500 or sometimes even you know maybe a bit more like 2,000 or something. Um, so this one is actually still fairly available even though it was released in 2007. Um, there's one I'm really looking forward to getting, which is the Silver silver Link, which is basically the, exactly the same class of engine. It's just uh, 
uh, this would this would all be silver. Um, it's it's very very light grey paint, still with a black front, um, silver silver wheel trims, and a nice sort of grey on this valance here. That's another thing that's nice about the mallard, as opposed to some other uh, A4s, is that. I think at some point they took all this off because they needed access to the wheels and stuff. But I always thought they looked much better with this uh, side piece on, uh, because as this this line comes up over here, it's just a really graceful uh, kind of line, sort of half bow thing, sort of weighted towards this end in, in the in the curve because it uh, slopes off a little more gently off off to this end. But then uh, when they took the valance off, there's this rather ugly sort of piston bit sticking out here, and it just doesn't. It just ruins the the kind of graceful lines of of the locomotive, which is I think as Gresley would have wanted them. Um, I don't really know much about it to be honest. I'm just guessing. But uh, yeah, Silver Link will be released sometime this year, and I think it's probably coming out July 2010 or. May or something like that, uh, but they're only making a thousand of those, so uh, we're going to have to uh, be pretty snappy about getting them if you want them. Uh, anyway, I think that's all there is to say about this particular one, so uh, I would definitely recommend this. All the best, see you next time.